What's up guys? Today I'm going to be talking about the HX Stomp and why I think it is one of the most useful and versatile pedals that you can buy today and how even though it's been out for quite a while it is one of the best uh, buys for your money that you can do. As always, if you like what you're seeing on the channel, please hit subscribe, uh, hit that like button. Apparently that does a lot of good for me. So hit subscribe and let me know in the comments what you want to hear about and what kind of videos you want to see from me in the future. So a little bit of my history with this pedal. I picked it up probably five or six years ago, I think, uh, mainly to cover the kind of everything else on the board that I didn't want to buy a specific pedal for. Like I, I didn't want to have to have a flanger and a phaser and all these things that are less common to use. Um, I could just use this one thing to cover all that. And it also had the amp sim stuff, which at the time I didn't need a ton, but could see myself wanting in the future. And it ended up being just a mainstay on the pedal board since I've gotten it. And it's gone through a ton of different variations as far as my rig and then how they have continued to update the the Helix software and the HX edit and all that kind of stuff to really keep it competitive with all the other stuff that's coming out today. So I'm gonna walk you through a few ways that I use it and have used it in the past and not a super in-depth, but a couple of tips and tricks that I've found really helpful with ways to set it up of how I use the pedal. So stick around. And for today, I'll be running my Bluesman Vintage sedan, double humbuckers, uh, through the board and the stomp for this part into my car Mercury uh, straight in Pro Tools. All right, so for this, I have the stomp on the board acting like the rest of the board isn't there still and I'm going to show you how I used it with with a real amp but back when I was using it with MIDI switchers where I would just cycle through a few presets to get what I needed out of it so I have basically presets set up for different vibes is how I thought about it at the time and it worked it was pretty effective for covering the ground that I needed it to cover so here's one that I used for more jazz stuff. You can turn delay on. Or add some drive or compression if I wanted to. I had other presets designed that would cover different things. So this one was more for the funky kind of gospel R&B thing that I would do. And if I disengage the compressor, I had it to also turn on the delay. Things like that let me really quickly jump between two fairly different sounds. So if I was on a gig and needed to move from a rhythm part to a big washi chorus part, I could just do it with one button. Same concept, this one I just had set with a reverb and delay always on and then I could turn the drive and chorus or a EQ set as a boost on with the foot switches. So I had a bunch of different sounds set up like that and that was just one of the easy ways that I could use the stomp by itself with a simple two button switcher or something like that just to move through and cover a lot of ground with one pedal. One feature that I found really helpful with the Stomp was Command Center and really getting into HX Edit to kind of get the most out of the Stomp that I could. And one thing that I would do a lot was set up one of my switches to be a snapshot block and just in Command Center telling it to cycle to the next snapshot with each press and I would use that to control my wet effects 
and then have two switches still available for other things. Or if I was using an external switch, four switches available to do other things. So this really made the stomp go a lot farther when I was using it just as a standalone unit. In this preset, I'm running a Ventro with their 112 Deluxe cabinet and then a couple other basic things. So here we have dry. So if I go to the second snapshot, that brings in delay and reverb and adds a little bit of compression. But I still have manual control of if I want to bring in the drive or the chorus. And then if I hit the third one, I just have that set to be even more delay and reverb. I was using this a lot with a small rig for some CCM stuff. So that's a little easy way where you can set up the stomp to be able to cover a lot of ground just by itself. So one of the most common ways to use the stomp and one of the ways that I use it is as amp sims and a few other things. So I've used and owned a fair amount of the different uh, amp simulator or Kemper-esque things. I've used a Helix and obviously the Stomp and the Walrus ACS-1 and Strymon Iridium and they all have their perks and their downfalls but I think bang for your buck the Stomp is the best one you can really dial in the amps more so than in some of the other units and it's not as expensive and kind of one use as something like the Kemper I also just never loved the Kemper it never felt right to me but here is how I set up for a a DI stereo rig at the moment. I've got a couple effects going in the front and then two amps. I like the Ventro and the Princeton. They sound great. Going into a stereo cabinet block with two David Hislop IRs, which his things sound awesome. So, And from there we go to the effects loop, which sends to the timeline and then back to the stomp and to the flint. So here's what that sounds like. Here's with a little drive from the light speed. sounds great. It does the job for uh, a lot of CCM guys. They'll use these things or trying to get a more compact rig. It handles modulation stuff really well. So here's a much bigger delay and reverb with the same amps. It can do the church thing really well, sounds great. The last update that Line 6 pushed really changed the game for the Stomp by changing how they used uh, IR blocks and cab blocks and all that stuff to make it use way less DSP so you can put two amps, a dual cab block, and still have some other effects. Really makes the Stomp cover all the ground that I needed to cover. Um, in the past, I would have to get really creative with maybe using one amp block and then two IRs or not being able to use wet effects within it as well. And so having it be way more efficient with DSP has been really helpful. The main way that I've used the stomp is just as the cover everything kind of pedal. And when I do this, I set up a bunch of different effects all on the one preset. And then if I need to quickly switch to a flanger, I'll just go in there and remap it to the foot switch that I want it on. And that works really well for me. I've got a bunch of sounds saved in the favorites and then a bunch of sounds saved in presets and I can quickly access what I need to for each gig and it's easy. 
they make it really easy. So I'm not going to dive super deep into that because I went into it a little bit in my pedalboard walkthrough that you can check out. So if you want to know more about what I'm currently using with that, then you can check it out there. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. I really do think the Stomp is one of the best pedals out there. It can cover so much ground and do so many different things that it's a great option for guys who are looking to use it like I am as the catch-all but amp sim kind of thing or if you want to use it just as a rig or if you want to get started with pedals and get one thing that can do all of it pretty well and not have to spend an inordinate amount of money on a bunch of pedals that you don't really know what they do you can use this to try stuff and I don't even get into using this to kind of emulate some pedals that I use and that I really like that I own the actual pedal of. Uh, it's great for that, it's great for all kinds of different things. So if you haven't, check out the HX Stomp, it's great. Uh, if you liked this video, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and if you want to hear more from me about different things, you can check out my Instagram, at Hunter Strasser, or just uh, hit me up in the comments and tell me what you want to see videos about. Thanks.